Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the stacked bar chart by Aquilon. Now, the stacked bar chart by Aquilon is very similar to the native bar chart, but the big difference is the selection rectangle that's made available to you in this visual that allows you to select a cluster of values that you have within the bar chart. Uh, it's very simple to configure, very easy to set up, but again, that selection rectangle makes it much easier to do cross-selection with other visuals that you might have with inside of your chart. You're going to see that in our example that we're going to do here in a few moments. Again, this one is developed by the company called Aquilon. Let's go ahead and walk you through how to use the stack bar chart by Aquilon. All right, so for this example, we're going to be using a simple data set that just has sales by region. We can find that data set by going up to the Get Data section and selecting Excel. I'm then going to choose my sales by region file. Go ahead and double click and open that. And I will make some modifications to this data slightly because Power BI is going to automatically convert some data types in here that I don't want it to do. So we're going to go ahead and select the sales spreadsheet and click edit to make sure that we can correct the data types. The data type changes that we need to make are one, it's automatically converting our month column here to a date when it actually looks like this. If we remove the last step in the applied step section, you can see this is what it's supposed to look like. And I want it to retain that formatting. I'm then going to modify the data types a little bit to make sure that these two columns show up as text values. And then my total sales should show up as a decimal here. All right, so I've correctly completed the correction of my data types. I'll go ahead and hit close and apply, and this will bring my data now into the Power BI desktop data model. All right, our next step is we're going to bring in some visuals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a card visual right here where I'm just going to display the total sales. And so I'm going to show the total sales that I have, and I'm going to change the formatting of that visual to make sure that it actually shows the full number that I have. So I'm going to change the display units to none so I can see the full number appear here, and I'll leave that over here. We're going to use this to kind of show some of the cross-highlighting that you have available to you with the bar chart. And so now that we have that, we can actually go find and bring in that custom visual. The bar chart by Aquilon we can find by going over to the firm marketplace, the stack bar chart, I should say. And once we select the From Marketplace, we can search and find, just by typing bar chart, that there are several options already available to us, including the stack bar chart by Aquilon. That's the one we want in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and add this visual to our design surface. First, got to get it into our visualization pane on the right-hand side. You can see it appears here now. And once I select that, I'll make it take up a large section of the screen, so that way we can configure and work with it. And what I'm going to place inside of this visual is the fields that we have from our field list on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put something like the months to show up on the axis, the region to show up on the legend section, and the total sales to show up underneath values. All right, so we can see the chart returns back. Now, one thing I would like to see an enhancement done on this chart is the ability to change the sort order. Right now, the way the sort order works on the chart is it sorts it descending from your measure value or the value you have in the value section. And in reality, what I might want to do is actually sort it by my region that I shouldn't say region, but by my month that I have here. Unfortunately, everywhere you look where you would normally find sorting features, that's not possible with this visual. So that might be an add-in that you see at some point. All right, now some of the things that we can do to this chart, again, is the big piece is the selection capabilities. So if I were to select and hold down my mouse, I can drag and select certain values. And based on the selection of those values within inside of the stack bar chart, you can see they also filter other visuals that we have on our design surface. So I can select as many or as few as I want, and you can see every time I do that, it's going to add additional values into my card visual that happens to be on this report as well. So that's the big key element that you get with the stack bar chart that you don't have with the other visuals is that selection rectangle that allows you to do filtering. Now beyond that, there are a few other things that you have available to you inside the stack bar chart by Aquilon. You can find them by going underneath the format section. If I go over to the format paintbrush over here on the right hand side, you'll see there is a selection save settings, a little misspelling there it looks like in the, in the uh, visual. Uh, the only thing that really appears here is whenever you highlight something, you'll notice those values appear and show up in this object section. Nothing really that you need to do there, but you can just note that you can see what the selected values are underneath that section there. You can also find underneath the data color section, you can modify the colors that are being used in the chart. So if you wanted to change those, you can certainly do that by selecting a one of the colors or one of the values and then adjusting the color that's used for it. That's up to you what you'd like to do. So if I wanted Canada to be purple, I can make a change right there and do that. A little bit further down underneath the legend section, if you turn on the legend section, it should be on by default. You can change the position of the legend. So if you don't like it being on the top, you could move it to the right, for instance. And so it appears on the right here if you wanted. You could also make it show up in the bottom, 
or maybe the right center. Maybe that's a little better. You can adjust the text size of the, re the legend, so I can bump that up a little bit. And I can also adjust the color to maybe make it more of a pure black color so it's a little easier to read, perhaps. That's the legend. So let's move down a little bit more underneath the Y axis. You can also change the position of the Y axis here if you wanted to. Right now it's on the left. I can move it over to the right, which unfortunately goes on top of or underneath my legend that we just created. So I'll shift that back. You can also change the color if you want to make it a little bit more easy to read. You might make it a pure black color there. And you can bump up the text size here as well. You can change the font type and you can also change the width of each of these as well here. Some people also might want to look at the padding, so you can adjust the padding of these. Look at the chart as I make this change on the padding property. This determines how much padding there is in between, in between each of the bar and, uh, and bar visuals that we have here. So you can kind of adjust that if you wanted. You can turn on or off the title. So this is showing that the title for our y-axis is month. You can turn that on or off if you want, and if you turn it on, then you can adjust the formatting of that as well, or you can override it and type something on top of it if you wanted to. For the x-axis, you can do many of the same kind of things. So you can change the color if you want. You can change the font type or the color or the size. You have the ability to change many of the same things that you had a moment ago. You can also change and turn on or off the grid lines. So if you don't like the grid lines, you can turn those off. Notice when I do that, there's no value showing here at all. No lines going through the chart. And you can, if you wanted to, you can actually change the grid width. So you can bump up the stroke width here if you wanted to some. And you can also change the stroke type. So maybe I make it a dashed line instead of a solid line, and maybe I want to make it more of a pure black here. You can do that as well. In my case, I think I'm actually going to turn off the grid line, but it's nice to know that you could make those changes if you wanted to. I'm going to turn them off altogether. Then underneath the data label section, a little bit lower, if you turn the data labels on, you can see this is how they appear on the chart. Unfortunately, right now, the formatting that's appearing on those values is making it so you can't really see them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go underneath the data label section. I'm going to change the color of the data labels to black. And I'm going to change the display units here to either none, where you can see the full value here if you wanted. Or I can make it into the thousands places, which might be a little better for the chart. And then you can change things like the decimal places that are used and the position. So right now it's going to show up in the inside end if I make that change. Or I can make it the inside center. I kind of like the center. That's a good view for it. You can also tell it how to deal with uh, overflow text, or you can bump up the text size here a little bit. So maybe I bump it up a tad. And then some people actually like to add in a background to those data labels. So if I add in a background here, I can add in a background and maybe make it like a white background that has some transparency to it so it stands out a little bit more. So that's some options that you have in here. And I might bump down the text size just a little bit so you can see a few more of the data labels appear in here. All right, so looking pretty good. And again, you can increase the size of it. If you went into focus mode, you can see most of the labels start to appear again. So it's a nice little way to be able to visualize. But the key part, the big difference between this bar chart and all the other bar charts that you've probably played with in the past is that selection rectangle. Having that ability to actually select certain values just by using your mouse is a big improvement. And it's a nice feature to have with inside of a bar chart. That's it for this visual. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot. Music